and I just remember saying, shh, it's blood is pink. And I thought immediately, GP, no. And I called an ambulance. And at three o'clock, she came and said, well, unfortunately, things have gone worse. And she showed me her tummy. And her tummy felt like there was a hole that worked her lungs. And they said, she cannot um, carry on. Freedom! It's all for you. It's all for you. Freedom! Keep your ears to the ground. We're talking about the freedom! It's the best show in town. Hi guys, my name is Lua. Welcome back to my channel. And um, today from the topic, mainly talking about how we almost lost our daughter when she was four weeks old um, due to gripe water intake. And I just thought, I saw an article today and um, about gripe water and certain allergic reactions to, from babies due to desperation from parents when you have either a colicky child, a child who's got a lot of trapped wind or might just be have reflux or abdominal pain because of um, trapped wind. When I read that article today, I just thought this was the right time to talk about our experience with our daughter. And she was about four to five weeks old because of how we administered gripe water potentially, or it could be something else. I've actually looked in the fridge and before I go ahead, this video is not to discredit this brand or it's not to scare any parents from giving their kids gripe water if a doctor prescribes or on the supervision of a health professional. We did ours at home and it's, um, you can get this off the counter. So this is the actual bottle. Um, to be honest, I've never thrown it. You can see the expiry date is 2020 because this incident happened two years ago now. Um, so I kept this in the fridge and I just found it hard to throw it, which is really odd because I should really want to throw it far away. But because of what we went through, I just decided to keep it and tell my story one day. This might help in a parent with a newborn struggling, not able to sleep at night, desperate for a solution. So please watch this video to the end. And if this is the first time that you've actually come across my face, my name is Lua and I'm a health, family and lifestyle blogger. I do a lot of, I'm really keen on eating right, keeping healthy and um, helping other moms to be organized in the quest for keeping um, a healthy lifestyle. Let me go um, straight in because I don't want this video to be too long. So I'll start from how it happened. Basically, we, um, we had our daughter um, and she was like most babies, new newborns, the cry. I had three kids already prior to her. She was, she's our last um, and the kids are relatively grown up. So I think we forget how much babies have to cry when they're newborns because they're coming to a new environment. They cry for everything. They cry when they're hungry. They cry when they're eating too much. They cry when they're wet. They cry when, when they they just cry because they need to strengthen the lungs as well. My grandma used to joke and say, when a child cries is to make the lungs um, get air, you know, to make them strong. I don't know if it's a me, but um, there must be some kind of um, sense to that. The reason why I'm saying this is that if you're a new first time parent, don't get too carried away when a child cries. We, um, we struggled with her. She could not lie back because she had um, a reflux. So we, you know, but she was too young and we we're told to give her Kapol, um, Infacol. Infacol, it obviously comes up um, out in a, in a Doppler, like so you can give them drops. And we tried that, I think you can give that from birth. We tried that when I got my first visit for my health visitor because I was saying this child doesn't really, she was breastfed by the way, so this child doesn't really um, sleep much, she cries a lot, she's so unsettled, she, she shows signs of tummy and wind and discomfort. How can I help? And she said give her Infacol because she was I think about a week old. We got Infacol and, and this child will put it in her mouth, she'll struggle and once I have to feed her after maybe two, three hours, she'll send it out and have her food. And we thought that was funny, that was smart and that was a bit naughty. So we decided to, you know, get tough with her, tough with the newborn. And we said, you have to have the medication. We tried that, it failed profusely. And they said, maybe because of the consistency, let's try um, something else. This fateful day, I had my last visit for my health visitor. She was um, four weeks old. Um, so this, the lady came to check how she was doing and we said she's, you know, she's very unsettled. She knows that she's healthy. She's okay. She said, oh, you can give her gripe water. She's four weeks old. Recommendation is a month 
to um, between four weeks to six months, not over. And my mom at the time was visiting to help us with the newborn, like they do. My mom was like, oh, actually I can resonate with gripe water because it's something that within in our community, a lot of kids like newborns have gripe water. They have gripe water to help. Um, sometimes you just keep it with, um, in the morning um, and it's given with some cord um, liver or cord liver oil. If you guys know what I'm trying to say, if you grew up maybe in the 80s or 90s and you administer that or you were given that or you had a little brother or sister, please comment. I've forgotten what that is. But anyway, that was out of our topic. So my mom said, oh, yes, let's get it. I remember I think my husband went to buy this bottle of gripe water, which was meant to make our lives easy. Now, we came back naively. We gave her with a teaspoon. It was that is as good as just <laughs> digging a grave um, when somebody's still alive. Do not give a baby medication with a spoon, with a teaspoon. You use a syringe. When you have a baby, you should always have a syringe. So I gave her um, the first teaspoon of ash. This child coughed and was acting like she was struggling to swallow it and I thought you do this you did this with Infacor which is thicker and so you're just trying to refuse taking medication and the recommended dose is five mil five mil for a newborn is a lot of liquid and the thing about gripe water as the name suggests it's it's very watery so it's like water the reason why I'm showing you the consistency is because it is there is a possibility of choking Certain brands actually say give your child only when you have a health professional with you because it's like water and the the the, the swallowing um, reflexes are not able to take it in right so it could possibly lead to what happened to us and and they'll talk about they also talk about the fact that some gripe waters have alcohol that's why they say don't give over six um, um, times a day in 24 hours this particular brand, I've read the, the instructions is right here still, it says it doesn't contain alcohol. But there's things like allergy, if you have um, sugar, inherited sugar problems, like diabetes and stuff, processing sugar, it might be a problem because it has some sugar, natural sugars in it. And last but not the least, choking. And that is what happened to us. I gave her the first dose on the first day, I think it was the, the last day of, of, of April. 30th and um, in the afternoon she did that and I thought to my mom I'm not giving her a night because the way she reacted she was like <coughs> coughing and we tapped her back like you do reflex and she was better so I said to my mom she scared me a little bit I don't want to give her a night because I used to sleep with the lights dim alone just to make her sleep all through the night and she was in a bed next to me so I just thought I wouldn't really want to get myself up to, to give her this uh, medication so I thought I'll pass the night and that is what saved her, her life. Because if I had given her in the same manner that I gave her the day after, at night, this story would not be a one that I'll smile about. So I skipped the night feed, or the night medication, and in the morning, got up, raving, fed her, she was happy, contented. And my mom and I said, time for your medicine, young lady. You have to take it to get better. Got a teaspoon, and we gave her. I remember being in my PJs, she was in my laps, and then she started doing that same thing she did the first time, like watery eyes, coughing, struggling. And I remember saying, oh God, this child, you're going to have to take a medication. So five mil for a newborn is a lot. Um, so we gave the first bit, she coughed most of it out, but I noticed that she was having this motion in her eye, catch like air. I thought, oh, this is a bit new. This went on for like a minute. A minute is a very long time when a child is coughing child looks like she's choking so i remember calling my husband and running down he was working from home and i said this child is really coughing uh, you know and it's like she's choking and he came up took her like he did put her out and then i thought we'll come back and she was still doing that she was still struggling catching her, her trying to catch air and something like a mother that instinct just kicked in i said we need to do something I lose my phone like you do. I search really fast, child choking. They said, take a white cloth. 
like a muslin um, square put it on your lap turn her upside down and to your, you know do that on her back and we saw froth like a bit of you know saliva and it was pink we thought, mm. and then the next one was a bit bloody and I just remember saying shh it's blood is pink and I thought immediately GP no and I called an ambulance and that fateful call saved her life again ambulance was here and um, I'm talking to you now I've got like goosebumps because it feels like it was just yesterday when it happened the ambulance luckily if it was now with COVID it would have been a different story because of the fact that the ambulance service is overwhelmed and um, ambulance service was here like the paramedics were here in less than two minutes actually two of them came thing and I was hitting her back and she was still choking this is three minutes later and I remember them saying can you stop hitting her back mom help is on its way and before we knew it the paramedics ran upstairs get her to breathe took her into the ambulance and i thought it's gonna be okay maybe i overreacted nothing this child has been well they came back and said i'm so happy you called she's lost a bit of color her lips look a bit blue and her the soles of her feet look blue and she's lost them she's struggling with oxygen we'll give her some oxygen at that point i knew that I didn't even know what to, I didn't know what to expect. I've never been in an ambulance with one of my kids. I have three already. So really scary. I remember wearing my pictures and just thinking, I just grabbed my bag. I just took a baby bag with her essentials and got into the ambulance. We get ourselves in. We're all just standing and looking and thinking of just what has just happened. And um, got into the, the ambulance and they said well don't get worried we're going to we're going to get you there but she needs um some oxygen they had something in her nose and i just held her she was so tiny this is a four weeks old baby um i held her and we're going and she was looking she had stripped her clothes literally torn her clothes off and i just looked at her i just looked and i thought how did i get here and i remember you know being very you know emotional being a bit upset and they said oh, don't worry mom and they set me off <laughs> um, i'm trying not to now because um we are blessed that things were not worse we we drove and halfway through because they're monitoring her oxygen levels they pricked her leg that's why you can check a newborn's oxygen levels driving they said sorry don't get worried we're gonna have to put the siren on because we need to get her to the hospital quicker than we thought and that's when the race for life started we drove got to the hospital there was a team waiting for us at the bay area when we got in they took her tried to comfort me because I, I was a new mom i'm breastfeeding and still full of hormones i think i'm going to just put a picture of i took this picture so i knew i was going to tell this story one day being struggling and i just came and i saw blood and i thought where it said it mom is from her mouth and that's when I knew that something something was terribly wrong. And at, at that point, I don't even know, I threw my phone somewhere and they had to kind of just cut a place and put in, um, I can't remember the name now, please, you guys should help me. And took her in and they started monitoring and said she needed oxygen. They said, do we have any history of anything? And they suspected that they were going to keep her for five to seven days for um, an antibiotics because they thought it was pneumonia. Um, because it's water in her lungs and i'm thinking water in her lungs and we had this this situation where the paramedics called and called my husband because they stayed at home and we rushed to the hospital and they said oh we saw some stains on the on the on the because we moved into a new house it was relatively new but there was like um there was it was just after easter so there's lots of easter um chocolates because this has happened on the first of may so we'd had easter and the kids i think stained the carpet with some chocolate and it was brown and because they saw blood, you know, the hospital communicated and they, they stayed behind and asked if there was any child injured and they just tried to go down that route. Well, luckily, it didn't progress much, but it just kept me thinking that if we were not able to defend ourselves, it looked like we just missed this child because she was so well and she became so unwell suddenly. Long story, just to cut this story, not to, to go on for so long, um, she was admitted and they said, we'll give her seven days treatment. On the second day, <laughs> She was kept, um, she had, uh, this is what, this was the second day I'll show you, I think she was given CPAP, which is um, some kind of oxygen, 
overnight she was still not improving and we're not sleeping she was crying they refused to feed her because they thought she had a fistula where food was going to the wrong place because she did choke quite a bit um, every time we give her anything that was not breast milk, she choked. So they thought she might have a fistula and breast milk is natural, so it goes to the right place. But anything else might go there because of a hole. That worried me like hell. One day felt like seven days in the hospital, you know, breastfeeding. And I said, mom, just keep um, expressing you cannot feed her because we don't want to give her food. And this child cried on the first night, cried and cried. And I could not help her. It was the hardest thing I ever did. I remember spying in the night and just asking God, what did I do wrong? You know, second day, she was she went worse. And they said, Mom, just so you guys know, she'll be very unwell and then she'll get better. So pale, she looked like a different child. I just saw her lying there like she was lifeless. Although she was alive, they were giving her liquids directly in her tummy uh, but not milk and they, they gave her they moved from the milder oxygen which just felt like an AC or like opening the cold um, breeze to CPAP which was a lot harder and just the administering the doctor said the, the nurse was so nice this guy late in the hospital he said mom don't worry it should be okay this is gonna do it and that night I was at no slips and the doctor tapped me and said have you been expressing I said, yes, but I'm struggling. He said, you need to. Mom, you need to express because things are going to get hard. That was like one o'clock and two, and I was still not, I not slept for two days. And at three o'clock, she came and said, well, unfortunately, things have gone worse. And she showed me her tummy. And her tummy felt like there was a hole. So she'd been breathing. Um, I think normally if there's like you need to take 60 breaths in a minute, she was taking about maybe 80, 90 and she'd have walked her lungs and they said she cannot um, carry on with um, the heavy breathing. So they'll have to help her and they'll have to make her rest. I remember just falling on the floor and I called my husband. I said, don't get my mom up come now and he's like wow just crying he said come now we went then they took us to his room and they said i don't want you guys to see but we're going to have to intubate her and you know if it's a bigger child you might think i've spent some child with this time with this child and i kept thinking maybe this child doesn't want to stay with us maybe she doesn't want to leave maybe something you know i had all these funny thoughts um and my husband came in and I was just, we just sat down in the room and we cried together. I couldn't even think about praying. My mom was praying for me at home, but I was just all over the place. Came back and they said, mom, it's a good decision that you made because if we had, she had carried on breathing, she would not have made it through the night. And it was like four, in, it was like three in the morning. And they said, we're taking you to um, Liverpool or the Children's Hospital because they have the right equipment and you'll be kept there for her lungs to recover. Did an x-ray and her like right lung had collapsed for a child that's small. And I, um, I've just put some like this is the we us walking to to be taken and that was such a, a, a scary experience because they put her in a bit of a I don't want to use the word, but it's like a small coffin because it, it kept her enclosed that she had all these wires keeping her alive because they stopped her from naturally breathing. She was being assisted. In the car, the journey, I took some pictures of this and some of them. We drove, got there, and it was when we got there, it was the said, You are going to rest now, but mom, you've had a few difficult three days. You deserve to rest. Leave her with us. She'll be better. And as soon as I walked in, I felt like I was in the right place and she was going to get the right support. They gave the said because she's classed as um, very unwell and she's going to be obviously in the critical unit. We have to, we're going to give you accommodation. I think you had to pay caution. I was just like, this was amazing. I remember going to the hotel thinking, how can I leave? Not hotel, to the accommodation. It's like a, it's like a hostel. They're amazing. They had free food donations. 
everything. It was a nice self-contained room with a toilet. It was just, I did not really care. I could sleep on the floor if I had to. We said, mom, you need to sleep. Being next to her would not change. We have a nurse 24 hours watching your child one-to-one. -one. And the thing that I remember was when we were leaving, the nurse was like, you need to really sleep on the floor. And I heard that. And there were a lot of sick children. Some did not make it. Multiple heart, open heart surgeries at three months old. And they said she, my daughter was very poorly. So at that point, I just thought whatever happens, happens. I went to slept for the first time and they said we could call. I called and said, oh, she's okay. So let me just try to fast forward the story. Second day, same thing. So I had no progress. I was just expressing and they started giving her liquids. And they said they had to do all this test. One of the tests was quite intrusive. I remember taking her to the one and they said there's a risk that if she gets up moves, it could puncture a, a vital organ, but it's not going to happen. And with her, I was just so emotional, so beaten. And on the fourth day, we, there was some hope that she'd improved. And they said, oh, we've reduced the amount, we've been reducing the amount of oxygen that she, we're giving her, so she's doing well. I can't remember that. I think it was about... 40, 60, and they said, come, we've taken the, the breathing tube out, and I felt like, oh my God, finally, me and my husband, we ran, because that condition was just across, we ran, got to her ward, and she was just sit, sat there like that, crouched, and this is a new baby, and they held her neck to try to get her back used to breathing, and she had this, and they said, um, unfortunately, sorry, we we have to intubate her because she's not ready. Because they tried to give her, um, a, use the uh, debuchonizer, I don't know how to pronounce that. And that did not help. And she looked like her color was pale and she was struggling. And they said, please, you need to leave. We have to intubate her again. If you know what it means and how painful, we, what most people say is it's so painful to be intubated. And they had to do it again to a five weeks old child and that just crushed all of our hopes and at that point I went back to accommodation kept praying and a week later she started getting improving and our daughter made it finally were take transferred from intensive care it felt like celebration we packed out of the accommodation my husband went back home to cut the kids and um, I slept with her in the same room I was so excited without all of that on her face um, she had just a bit of you know help and she actually smiled first in the hospital these are memorable moments that most kids do in a different environment she did hers in the hospital to a nurse who was feeding her the nurse ended up just seeing a smile and i came back and she gave me a smile and that gave me hope and before we left she was smiling we came home she was so well she has kid had come back the drips had helped I carried on breastfeeding all through while I was there, which was a challenge because I was expressing and just giving them. They were storing them and I still got a bottle I kept for keepsake, my freezer. And I remember being discharged, I came home and it was so surreal. My mom had lost a lot of weight. The whole family looked devastated. My brothers, my dad, the whole family, my mom, everybody was praying for this child. She made a fantastic recovery. We went to the GP for a checkup and the doctor looked at the notes and said, is this the same child I've seen these notes about? And I said, he said, she looks so well. And till today, they said it was a freak accident. There was nothing after all the tests. She had no medical explanation as to why she choked. That's why I said, before you give a child cry water, administer it right because I think that it will if we use the syringe so the way to do it is you open the mouth and you put the syringe you put the medication like the back of the the jaw so that it trickles down because crab water is really very liquid and it could go to the wrong place so what happened with her is that it went into her lungs and she was only tiny and we I think the night before I don't know I really don't know but and um, the x-ray showed that she was struggling but she's made a full recovery and um, she's here with us today and we thank God for that and I've been wanting to tell this story but I've just never found the time I don't know I'm going to publish this video maybe in a few months maybe I don't know but 
I just want to say if this can help another parent, please think about how you give your child medication. Always use a syringe, it's always safe. Um, do you know anybody who's had a similar experience with gripe water? Share um, your experience. And what do you think? Do you think it's time, after I've kind of told my story, do you think it's time for me to be in that bottle of gripe water? Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. If you want to um, find out about my family and you're interested, just press the subscribe button and you will not be disappointed. Thanks for watching this today and if... Um, I share stories like this and I try to um, impact people, educate them and help them with my stories. So I'll have a few um, story times but this one was one that I had to share. So thanks for watching. So you might just save a baby's life if you shared this video. Let's be uh, more aware of the right way to administer medication for babies.